Well, there's a danger that he may be just a little more rigid today because he's finally reached the US Open and he knows his dream can come true over the course of the next few hours. Whether it's a significant factor in their relationship is that Uncle Tony doesn't get any money hmm. for coaching Rafa, so he's, he's in a nice position, whereas most coaches, of course, are having to be a little bit careful well, as to what they say. If, if that is the case, I think it's... That, ...that he said he deliberately played a little cautiously when he had the match points, when, when he looked so close to squeezing out the win. That's not quite what we've become accustomed to over the years. No. ...statistic th uh, with regards to classes in New York, obviously three titles now, 21 successive wins. We talk about the fact that she lives nearby, there was the emotional scenes at the end last night, but she's so at home here. Any reason why she can't maintain this dominance for a while? ...since that Mari Vavrinka match, and I know you're both still scratching your heads to, uh, as to exactly <laughs> what did go on then. Well, it was just bizarre. It was just meltdown in the third and fourth. Those quotes of Uncle Tony and, and wondering whether they could translate quite well to Andy at the moment. Whatever happens on a tennis court is not nearly as serious as, as what goes on elsewhere. Well, I guess you know. see him um, hitting behind us throughout the fortnight. A couple of times with John McEnroe, and there was still a little bit of feeling when those two got on court again. Andy Roddick for a little while not so long ago. Do you think he enjoyed that? Do you think we might see him coaching a high-profile player again, Greg? But when we see the way that Rafa played yesterday and throughout these championships, it's a wonder that more people weren't tipping him to win the title at the start of the I know, fortnight. I feel really anymore. guilty about that, actually. <laughs> because, uh with regards to Djokovic and his, his mental approach. At times in the past, to me, it's looked as though he's wading through treacle. He wanted to do anything <laughs> except go out on a tennis court. And as you said at times, even yesterday, he loses it, but, but he's able to refocus so quickly, and, and perhaps that's the most important development for him. Well, it is the most important. Some of the omens, he beat Roger Federer in the semi-finals of the Australian Open before going through to win his one major. He's finally turned that little problem against Federer here around, and now the weather is exactly as he, if nobody else, wants it. Such a modest guy. He once famously said that, that John, John McEnroe and anyone would make a great doubles team. But oh. when I mentioned that to McEnroe <laughs> afterwards, he was very quick to say, by no means was it a one-man show. No, absolutely not.